Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about political science and prophetic signs, more particularly my 2012 synopsis of end time alignment of nations. This is extremely important for you for now and in the future. China and India will be predominant in the demise of the U.S. dollar. Since China holds lots of U.S. note investments, they will not want the U.S. dollar to careen too precipitously until the time of perfection as far as they are concerned. Also, since China exports so much product to the U.S., they're not so anxious for the U.S. dollar to fail until situations prevail that would make such a downturn advantageous to them. Military superiority intertwined with economic factors or basic commercialism make strange but interactive bedfellows. India cut a deal in January 2012 to buy oil from Iran with gold rather than dollars. It may be that China will follow suit. China and India are both large oil consumers and soon to be probably the largest oil consumers in the world due to increased economic and manufacturing growth, along with population. With both China and India in bed with Iran on the gold finger, the USA will be hung out to dry. See my previous surmisings on other U.S. problems, mostly caused by the incest of politics and banking, and more recently contaminated by Obama's STD, or the socialized trade debt, at USA Past and Future. The link for that is in the show notes. However, do not discount Russia and Brazil as players in this decade of decadence. Russia wants the U.S. dollar dead also. Why? To weaken the U.S. both economically and militarily. And Brazil is in bed with Russia, India, and China through the consortium of BRIC, or B-R-I-C, and there's a link for that also in the show notes. Germany may at some time, and with proper circumstantial pressure, revert back to anti-Israel policies and attitudes. In a recent research report, anti-Semitism is still found to be deeply rooted in German society. Also, Germany would like to regain its base as a power people in coming years, especially in the confines of the EU and world commerce. Watch for this, as it could precipitate a forcep of inequity for Israel, resulting in a worldwide backlash against Jews. China has much to gain from the demise of the U.S. and the U.S. dollar, as opposed to India, who wants only positioning on the new global currency as part of world economic leadership. However, China has plans in place for the downfall of the USA in international psychology or game theory, similar to intercorporate group dynamics and based upon the Nash equilibrium. By the way, the specifics of much of what I'm sharing with you today you can find in links that are incorporated in the show notes of this podcast. I believe that China will at some point in the next five to seven years assume an already secretly scheduled strategy, replacing its seeming position as regards its partners of probability in the Nash equilibrium scenarios with or of the Kubler-Ross model of change. And China will use shock to their advantage psychologically in diplomatic circles in order to argue for acceptance in the 10 region new global governance along with Islam to the rejection of its diplomatic ties with not only its other competitors but mainly its diplomatic friend Israel. For many years China and Israel have worked together diplomatically. The key interchange will be the juxtapositioning of New Babylon and Jerusalem, the harlot versus the holy. It does not take too much theorizing along with Bible prophecy if one is a genuine and knowledgeable truth seeker to see that the imperial history of the Middle East, the world powers and their empires, have aligned over the centuries for a model to circumscribe the fulfillment of prophetic decrees by the prophets of God. 
Iraq is synonymous with the royal flush in poker. Why? Because the real reason for the war in Iraq plays a decisive hand in the end times prophetic poker game of power, resulting in the setup for the underpinning of the new Babylon. And that will bring about a paradigm shift in economics and geopolitics in the last days. China is smart to position herself as benefactor to the African nations by building infrastructure there, as it wants to be close to natural resources in Africa. This also lends logistic stability to China's role in the kings of the east versus Iran in the conflict over the strategy in waiting of Islamization of China. Surprisingly enough, some of the kings of the East will be vicious enemies of each other due to cultural and geopolitical views. To compare the military strength of the nations of the world, excluding nuclear capability, go to globalfirepower.com. There will be a link in the show notes for this. You will see that China and India are two out of the four top players in the world. They rank as follows. Number one, USA. Number two, China. Number three, Russia. Number four, India. Most nations want the USA strong as long as it benefits them economically. However, since the writing of the book The Ugly American in 1958 by Eugene Burdick and William Lederer and the 1963 film with the same title starring Marlon Brando, Americans in their country have taken a less than front seat in the eyes of many countries and their citizens. The element of jealousy also plays a large part, not only among citizenry, but in political power circles. You are never jealous of anyone unless they have more or better than you, even if they help you and are your benefactor. North Korea is the wild card in the deck, no pun intended. North Korea is as unpredictable as its new leader, Kim Jong-un, but it is highly probable it will be included in the alignment with the kings of the East. The influence of uncertainty plays a psychological factor in the alternate plans of leading nations, even in the Pacific Rim where other small nations like Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines are antsy with regard to North Korea. One possible scenario, although highly unlikely, is that Kim Jong-un's half-brother would take over as leader. That could change the whole picture as far as possible elimination of nuclear nutcases, but they could still be dangerous as far as supplying training and materials to rogue nation states or terrorist groups. Iran is at the epicenter of imminent military and nuclear concern at this time juncture. The only key dampening effect on Iran is Israel. The U.S., EU, UN, and NATO are not to be relied upon to stop Iran because of weakness and lack of resolve in their leadership. Only Israel can and will do the job. For a discussion of Iran and its ties with Russia and Iran's ultimate defeat, go to Israel Times of the Sign at Podcast Satellite. There's a link for that in the show notes also. However, for a chronological flow of how Iran plays in the Middle East conflicts before its ultimate destruction, see my message to Israel, BB, IDF, and Mossad at Podcast Satellite. Ahmadinejad, Iran's governmental leader, claims that he is to personally prepare the world for the coming Mahdi. In order to save the world, it, the world, must be in a state of chaos and subjection. Ahmadinejad claims he was directed by Allah to pave the way for the glorious appearance of the Mahdi. This apocalyptic directive includes some very scary proclamations. Israel is faced with autonomous decision-making, unlike past international relationships, both diplomatic and militarily. The only way Israel will defeat Iran is by taking action on its own. If I were the key decision maker in Israel, I would suggest EMP attacks on Iran. Let me be specific. It appears that no other nation is worthy of posturing with Israel at this time. Israel cannot depend on anyone except God at this coordinate of strategic interplay. Especially can they not depend on the USA, who is long on words and short on substance because of its leadership, not because of its people. The U.S. president may take action against Iran as a political gesture in spring or early summer of 2012, posturing in time for the 2012 presidential elections in the fall. However, the president's previous stance in his effort to move Israel back to 1967 borders 
which was manifested right before Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech to the U.S. Congress May 24, 2011, is a bad omen. When Obama saw that Congress and the American people would not stand for such betrayal of Israel, he promptly reversed course. I think also that it is highly probable that Barack Hussein Obama may one day be Secretary General of the United Nations, and that could well be a portent of calamitous events prophesied in the Bible. The U.S. set a goal date for deploying a commando platform in the Persian Gulf about May 2012 indicating preparation for military clashes to blow up with Iran in the late spring or early summer of 2012. However, this is not a strategy to help Israel per se, but only to preserve the flow of oil through the Strait of Hormuz. It has nothing to do with the nuclear threat posed by Iran, nor the defense of the Israeli people. It is strictly a countermeasure against mines which Iran has threatened to plant in the Strait of Hormuz in reprisal for the U.S. and E.U. oil embargo. The U.S. Navy SEALs will also take on Iran's menacing fleet of military speedboats aimed at striking tankers, coastal oil targets around the Gulf like export terminals, and U.S. ships preyed upon by missiles and suicide underwater missions by Iran's teams. Saudi Arabia pledged to increase production of its oil to make up for diminishing oil supplies from canceled oil orders from countries placing sanctions against Iran. However, necessary quantities of oil will not flow from the Saudis until May 2012, and Iran may opt to attack oil tankers as well as U.S. Navy ships in the Persian Gulf before then. Why would Iran foolishly wait until the U.S. and other of Iran's adversaries have their ducks in order by May? Now let me tell you what to watch for in the future. In 2012, there will be great model changes geopolitical, economical, and military shifts, course-altering events that will affect the future of planet Earth and usher in the end-time preparation decreed by the prophets of God in the Holy Scriptures. After 2012, watch for either of these. A world leader who is fatally wounded in the head and whose deadly wound is healed, This leader will be the one the New World Order, the New Global Order, will choose as their leader. He will be the pseudo-Messiah. Or, watch for a world system which was seemingly dead and is revived and becomes a great world power once again. This could be Islam. The eastern leg of the old Roman Empire outlived the western leg for about a thousand years. In the past, many Bible scholars tried to fit the old Roman Empire into the ten-nation confederacy that will arise in the last days, from which the Antichrist or the false Mashiach will be chosen or ordained. However, these scholars failed to take into consideration that the Ottoman Empire and the influence of Byzantium and Islam was the extension that lasted longer for approximately 1,000 years in the eastern leg of the old Roman Empire. So hermeneutically, Islam could be the exact fit for a deadly wound that was healed. This is probably the correct interpretation, and therefore, watch Islam and watch Turkey. Also, after 2012, watch China. It will surpass Russia and the USA in nuclear proliferation and become part of the military triumvirate of the East. Also, watch for a combination of the EU, the League of Arab States, and Iran forming a complex of ten regions or nation-states. Sometimes strange bedfellows work together because they have a common goal. And then watch for this. New Babylon will become the concourse of world trade and Muslim ideology. I've included two different links concerning Babylon in the show notes of this podcast. Watch and pray, my friend. You're living in the most exciting time you could ever live. God has a job for you. And remember to use your faith, not fear. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.